Hey y'all, what is up? And welcome back to my channel for a brand new Sims 4 Let's Play. Yeah. Alright, you guys, so I have been itching to start a Let's Play for The Sims 4. And I know if you followed my channel any, you're like, Carissa, you always start Sims 4 LPs, but then you just, you never finish them. <laughs> and uh, Guilty, yes, I know. But here's the thing. I always start my Let's Plays when a new expansion pack comes out. And here's the thing. When you're a small YouTuber, a small simmer, you're a small fish in a big pond, it's really, really hard <laughs> to, you know, thrive <laughs> with that series because it's a, such a popular expansion pack. If it's a new expansion pack and there's so many popular simmers that, you know, granted, they've worked hard for their channel and, you know, they typically get the most views. So, it's, it's a little bit discouraging. Um, and also, aside from that, it's just... I haven't really had, I went through like a little spell where I wasn't having a lot of fun with The Sims 4 gameplay, but I'm very hopeful for the future of the game, and I really wanted to have a Let's Play that I can work around all the expansion packs. I wanted it to be unique. I wanted it to have a storyline because I love to storytell in Let's Plays. That's just how I personally like to play. But like I said, I wanted it to be unique. I wanted it to stand out. And so hopefully, you know, I've done a little bit of brainstorming. I've done a lot of work. Just getting this safe file ready. And I hope you guys really enjoy it. And it's just something different than what you usually watch for your entertainment when you're watching your Sims 4 LPs from your other Simmers. Um, so, introducing my Sims for Legacies Let's Play. And I do, uh... <laughs> I did kind of copy the name from the show Legacies, <laughs> um, but not because it's anything like the show, if you've ever watched that show. So, yes, it is going to be, well, it's not focusing on Supernatural, but it does include Supernatural Sims. Um, I have been, in, you know, on a Vampire Diaries, Originals, and Legacies kick lately, and I'm holding out for like a witch pack or something that gives us more supernatural characters, but aside from that, I wanted it to include humans as well, not really focus on the gameplay of the vampires in The Sims 4, but just include them in the story because you know, everybody loves vampire shows, and I just think it's unique, and I think it's different, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, let me introduce you to our family, and I'm so sorry that I just, I wish that I could do intros for the first episode for you guys. Kind of have like a machinima to help me storytell, but I just am not good at that. So, here we are at our main family's house. And in our main family that we're focusing on right now, it will be three Sims. And this is their house. They live in Windenburg. And this house is actually a renovation by Simlessy. And I absolutely love this renovation. I knew from the start this would be the perfect house for this family. Um, so, yeah, I really love it. I didn't go in and build a house for them. I just, I was ready to get started. So, shout out to Simlessly. This is a beautiful house. If you want to download it, it is available for download on the gallery. But anyways, yeah, um, bear with me while I try to explain our Sims to you guys. So, you guys know in the first part, it's usually a lot of talk and a lot of introducing, but it's important. So, here we go. So, our three main sims in this family is brother and sister. They are vampires. And his name is Alistair Belmont. This is him. Oh, he's very handsome. I love him. <laughs> and then his sister, Abigail Belmont, um, who we'll call, you know, Abby for short. She's so cute. She's so pretty. I freaking love her. <laughs> and then, of course, we have Miss Bryn Roth here. And she is human. And the reason why she's living with them is actually actually very interesting and that's what I'm about to get into but a little bit about the Belmonts um, they have been vampires for hundreds of years so they are actually um, Grand Master vampires so they're high up ranked um, very established in the vampire community um, as far as like their careers and everything he is actually a freelance writer I did want to take advantage of the freelance careers um, because I haven't played with those yet so I thought it'd be really fun um, and I also didn't want to have them like 
you know, in like an actual career path because, you know, they don't age. So, I, you know, we kind of want to blend in a little bit. So, we're doing some stuff in our spare time on our own time. So, freelancing works perfectly. So, he is our freelance writer. And as far as his traits, he is a loner, a bookworm, romantic, and gregarious. And his little lifetime aspiration is to be a good vampire. So, here's the thing about Alistair. Alistair is kind of the opposite of his sister in the sense that he would rather be human. Um, he and his sister both were turned. Unfortunately, it was not their own choice. Their family was murdered and they were turned into vampires. So they've learned to cope with it. But for a very long, long time, they despised who they were. They really did. And um, they actually... You know, as obviously they're hundreds of years old, <laughs> um, they they've learned that it's, it's somewhat of a blessing, you know. And he really wants to use his life and who he is and his powers for the better and be a good vampire. But you know, part of him still holds on to the hope that maybe one day he'll find a cure and he can go back to being human. Um, it's been a long time, and there's, like, no end to being a vampire. I mean, you can die, but unfortunately, he, he doesn't want to die. He just wants to be normal. Um, so, they've both done very well at coping with who they are. Um, they're good vampires. She also has the aspiration, a good vampire. And her traits, she is self-absorbed. She's a little bit about herself, and she's absolutely stunning. <laughs> I mean, you know, years of having all the boys and all the attention, it kind of will probably take a toll on a girl, but she's a little self-absorbed. She's family-oriented. She absolutely loves her brother, would die, would kill for her brother. Um, she's very creative, and she's gregarious, and like I said, she does have the good vampire trait as well, and she is a freelance artist, so they're both in the freelance career, so we'll get to, you know, play with that a little bit, um, but yeah, that's a little bit about the Belmont, so you're probably wondering how in the world do, why do they have this random human living with them, and why in the world is she so freaking sad, well, <laughs> This is Bren Roth, like I said, and she was a teenager. Um, both Alistair and Abigail, they are young adults, but Bren is a teenager. And what happened, unfortunately, it's a really sad story, but Bren's parents, so her dad Morgan and her mom Lena, they were very much involved in the supernatural world. Um, they were not supernatural, but they kind of hunted supernaturals. Um, just was very curious about them, and they kind of unfortunately crossed paths with um, the not good supernaturals of the world, and they were a threat. Um, they were believed to be a threat to supernatural um, sims, and obviously they don't want people to find out they're supernatural and that it's really a thing because it would be like a war. So, um, yeah, they kind of tiptoed around and uh, ran right into the monster daddy himself. And he kind of saw that it was time for them to go. It was their end. He couldn't risk, you know, them uh, revealing supernatural life as it is. So, he actually, um, her parents were actually murdered. And I will show you um, the family that murdered her mom and dad because it's like all going to like tie in in the future parts and stuff. So, yeah, we got a lot to talk about. But anyways, they were murdered and obviously they had a daughter and she was supposed to have been away you know, across seas, studying and everything. So, obviously, she didn't know much about Supernatural. She knew that her parents were kind of, like, invested in it. But she was like, whatever, Mom and Dad, I'd have to see it to believe it. Well, I think she believes it now. So, she does know that Supernaturals murdered her parents. Um, but she does not know who it was or really why. All she knows is that she was saved. And she was saved by Alistair and Abigail, but mainly Alistair. So, Alistair and Abigail, since they are Grand Masters, they are very, very much um, involved, you know, with the other vampires in the world, which we're going to meet. So, let me introduce you. <laughs> this is uh, Jonathan Strahd, and he is the 
absolute grandmaster, a head vampire. He is the big daddy, and he is the one who murdered her family. And she does not know that. They know that. They don't want her to find out because it could cause major problems. But Jonathan saw that, you know, she wasn't a threat. Um, and he's, if something happens to where she becomes a threat, it's Alistair and Abby's life on the line. You know, he will not think twice about ending <laughs> their long life. <laughs> um, but he is married to... Alicia Strahd, and obviously, Alistair and Abby are not very fond of Jonathan. He's just a very evil sim, but, you know, they, they get along well with Alicia. She's not as just out there and evil and obnoxious as her husband, and they also have a son, and his name is Nico, and he is a teenager, so... Um, yeah, we have quite a few vampire sims. I'm not really sure if the other sim vampires are going to interact with her. We're just going to have to see how that goes. But his name is Nico, and he is a teen, so he's just like his father. He's very arrogant, very evil. We're not a fan of Nico, Alistair, Abby. Nope, don't really like him. Um, like I said, Bren doesn't know any of these other vampires. All she knows is that she was taken captive and told that if she wants to live, this is her new home. <laughs> And while it's a very beautiful home, she's obviously very upset. She just lost her parents. And she's absolutely just traumatized, confused, what in the world, um, what, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> she was told, you know, look, I'm sorry this happened, but you're in danger now. So if you want to live, you need to live with us. You need to let us have your bag. We're going to take care of you and we're going to work this out to where you can you can go free. You're not going to be held accountable for, you know, your parents and what happened and whatnot. So, she does not have a very good relationship at all with Abby and Alistair. She does not like them. She's kind of pissed off that she's here. Um, it's very, very fresh. It just happened a couple of days ago. Um, she is allowed to go to school. She's allowed to just do whatever she wants. You know, they don't want to take away her freedom, um, in that sense. But she does kind of have, like, a tracker on her so they can watch her and keep up with her and protect her. Um, but they're, they're giving her her space. So, right now, she's very bitter towards it. But I think in the end, she's going to see that she should be very, very thankful if she only knew what they were protecting her from and the people the vampires that she was being protected from, she would really um, appreciate Alistair and Abby and what they're doing. And I hopefully think that their relationship will get better as time goes on. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit about Bren uh, as far as she goes and her traits and everything. Um, she is hot-headed, a loner, and alluring, and she does have the soulmate aspiration. And the relationships in her life, she actually has kind of like a love interest. They're not boyfriend and girlfriend, but his name is Zane Montano. I'm sure we're going to see him some. She has a friend named Colin James. She has a friend named Tori Montano, which is Zane's sister. And then her best friend is Simone Carrera. So she does have quite a few friends. And like I said, we're focusing on her and the vampires. So we're focusing on humans and, you know, vampires in the sims and so yeah we're gonna kind of dibble dabble in both hopefully by the time she ages up we'll have university and we can kind of like explore that with her my fingers are crossed i do have aging on long just so we can kind of story tell and have fun with that but back to the belmonts before we get into a little bit of gameplay i do want to explain to you some of their relationships in their lives um obviously they're very very close um <laughs> the abby and alistair but also, there is a vampire. Her name is Lyra. Lyra. I don't know how you would say it. I call her Lyra. So, we're just going to call her Lyra. You can pronounce it either way, I'm sure. But, um, Lyra Vinson. Um, this is his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> and it's very, very fresh. She's a, oh my gosh, she's so gorgeous. But, um, they dated for a, a long time. They were kind of like on and off. And it just... He's complicated. He's a very complicated sim. His emotions are kind of all over the place. And he kind of broke up with her. She's still madly in love with him. So, their relationship is very complicated. 
His best friend is Luca Crow, and Luca and Lyra actually live together in Forgotten Hollow. They're really good friends as well. Um, they don't have any family, so they just kind of live together, but his best friend is Luca Crow. He is acquainted um, with Alicia Stride, which is the evil daddy, Jonathan Stride's um, wife. Like I said, he doesn't like Jonathan. He doesn't like Nico. Um, as far as, like, the other Sims that he is acquainted with is the Zahn family. They are a vampire family, and it consists of Heath Zahn, his wife Viviana, his daughter Eva, his son Beckett, and then their other little daughter, Elizabeth. So, he's pretty good friends with uh, the mom and dad, but he's good friends with Beckett as well. Um, Beckett kind of looks up to him, so, you know, they, they hang out a lot, work out a lot together. Um, so, he, they do have a very good reputation in the, the community, the vampire community. And as far as she goes, um, she kind of has like a flirtationship with her brother's best friend, which is Luca Crow. They've never, you know, kissed or done anything serious, but uh, they both have a, have a thing for each other. And she's best friends with his ex-girlfriend, Lyra. So, you know, there's only so many vampires, so, you know, that just kind of like intertangle and I just can feel some drama coming. But, yeah, I think that's pretty much it as far as like the explaining goes. I hope you guys understand um, the storyline and what I'm going for here. And the reason I'm calling it Legacies is not because it's, like I said, anything like the show Legacies, as you can probably tell from me just kind of explaining everything so far. Um, but because I want to kind of continue this family, these Sims, for future, you know, expansion pack releases and just kind of hopefully you guys like this and this just becomes a popular series on my channel. Um, the main reason is because Alistair and Abby have been vampires for a long time and they are good vampires and I think that they both want to leave a good legacy behind so that's why I did call it legacy so we'll see how that goes so yeah we're we're into the gameplay now it's actually 8 a.m. I'm probably not gonna have too too much gameplay because I feel like I've done a lot of talking but who is calling us hey I heard you became friends with Viviana Zahn she's pretty cool yeah she is. It's your wife, dude. <laughs> but, anyways, it's Sunday, so she does not have school, but she just woke up and came down here to have some breakfast. She is moping around. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine how she feels? You know, her parents are murdered by vampires. She didn't even know vampires existed, and now she's living with two vampires. <laughs> and so she's kind of, like, resentful that she's living with these two that are part of, um this evil supernatural <laughs> what what do you want to call it uh pfft, clan uh coven whatever that has has killed her family but she doesn't know all the details and trust me she has tried her research she um was given a room so this is her room and it's decorated very nicely i kind of you know left the walls blank because she's she refuses to really unpack she doesn't want to be here at all um but she did lock them out of her room, and she does have a laptop, and she has been doing her research on vampires. And I'm not really sure how accurate the research is online, because I know for me, I Google stuff all the time. And it's like, you need to stop Googling stuff, because it just stresses you out, you know? If I get a cough, I'm like, oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know if her doing a lot of research is really going to help her and her feelings towards these two. But it looks like Abby's down here taking a nice dip in the pool. And um, he's going to take a swim too, but I think what I want to have him do real quick is come up here and kind of work. Why can't he chat with his client online? Is that not a thing? Do we have to? I don't understand. I don't know how to do this. Okay, I'm not really sure why it's not letting me chat with the client. It's just not working. Not really sure why. Let me try this computer because hopefully this isn't a glitch. Okay, so maybe it's something to do with his computer. He can't. Okay, we'll have to fix that. Um, maybe I need to put my move objects cheat on because I don't have it on right now probably. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to have him get on here in his sister's room. Um, oh, by the way, I, I didn't give a tour of the house. This is Abby's room. It's very girly like her. Very, very cute. And this is Alistair's room. Very nice. <laughs> 
And then, like I said, this is a Bren's room. And this is just a little spare bedroom over here. I just put the little decoration box in. Not really sure what we're going to do with all that. But, um, Zane is calling us. I can't get you out of my mind lately. Want to go on a date and get some breakfast at the Shrieking Llama Diner. Um, <clears throat> I think we're going to do it. We're going to go <laughs> just so I can introduce you to Zane. And obviously she wants the heck out of that house. So she's telling Abby, hey, I got to go. <laughs> I just need to go hang out with my friend and just get some air. And like I said, they told her she can have her freedom. She can go hang out with her friends. It's not like they don't have superpowers and they don't know where she is. Um, so anyways, here we are. And here is Zane taking selfies of himself. I mean... Why am I not surprised? <laughs> she's super sad, so I don't really think she's in the mood to do any kind of flirting, but he's so handsome, and she's so into him, but obviously this is very complicated, and she's really not allowed to tell what happened, um, as far as anybody knows. This is just family friends <laughs> that is, um, owes a favor to her mom and dad, so she is being taken care of very well, um, that's the story. So that's what she's having to tell all of her friends. But she's moping around. And I don't know if she's going to keep her mouth shut. But I think after, you know, realizing what happened to her mom and dad, she's definitely going to keep her mouth shut until she gets down to the bottom of what's going on. Um, so she just ate. So she's really not hungry. But we're still going to come and hang out with Zane. She just wanted to have a little bit of normalcy for a change because the past few days have been insane as you can imagine so we're probably just gonna have like a coffee or something and i mean i guess we can kind of um ask him about his day <laughs> you know how is your day going i'm sure it's a lot better than mine you know you're not living with no vampires oh that's great <laughs> your parents still alive cool all right and i'm just gonna order for the table real quick all right, so, what does she know? Here is another vampire. <laughs> she just has no idea. Um, there are, obviously, other vampires like Caleb <laughs> from the Vampire Pack himself um, in, in the gameplay. But we don't really associate with them yet. And, like I said, hopefully we'll get more supernatural sims like witches and stuff that we can incorporate into this game pack. So, I really wanted to have Supernaturals included in my Sins for Let's Plays just because, fingers crossed, it's something that we get in the future. And it's just a fun storyline that we can just kind of expand all the way around and explore it all. So, yes. Anyways, so she is just, you know, kind of talking to Zane and he's like, well, you know, how, how are you doing? You know? And she's like, I'm, I'm okay, you know, doing the best I can. Um, but thanks for, you know, asking me to get out of the house and have some coffee just you know it, it means a lot he's like yeah no no problem um but yeah i don't obviously i don't even really remember <laughs> uh, much about him but i want to say that he's a little bit of a, a douche <laughs> i think i'm not sure because it's i've been working on this for weeks and i probably should have refreshed my memory but um yeah they're pretty good friends we don't really <laughs> know much about him like we don't know any of his traits which is a little strange so we'll probably need to come over here after we use the restroom and get to know him a little bit so um we can just kind of see you know if we need to kind of protect our girl from him or not but i don't know i, I so far i mean he's, he's sweet he invited her out <laughs> and just he's he's being there for her so that's good so that's saying a little bit of something but i think he's just typical you know pretty boy and all the girls want him but you know they're they're nothing serious they're more good friends than anything oh yeah okay so he has the mean traits so he's uh, a little bit of a jerk you know he's, he's a popular kid but not the friendliest um where is our coffee like seriously all i did was order coffee this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I was playing The Sims 2 the other day. Um, if you watched any of my Sims 2 LPs. And when they go out to eat, when they dine out, it they order and boom, their food comes. And I just think The Sims 4 needs to take some notes. But what is she doing? She's getting so aggravated. She's like, gosh, I'm bored. I need a shower. Oh, well, where did he go? I mean, okay, Caleb, you're supposed to... Caleb, 
I don't know about you, but I have been talking about how this is supposed to be a secret. Nobody's supposed to know supernaturals exist, and you were wishing around here, just freaking flying through here like it ain't no big deal. You need to take it down a notch. I mean, I will report you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but anyways, this is taking way too long, so you know what? We're just gonna pretend <laughs> that we had our coffee or whatever, or maybe we're just like, you know what? I thought this was something that, you know, would be good for me, but now that I'm thinking about it, I, I really... I really just want to go and what I want to do real quick is I want her to visit her mom and dad's grave. So we are in Forgotten Hollow and this is where I placed the graveyard but um, her mom and dad is buried here. I wanted her to you know actually come here and visit them to make it a little bit more realistic but her best friend's calling. I'm really sorry to hear about your loss. Let's go grab lunch at the old salt house. So we can talk about it. Oh, she's just going to text Simone back and say thank you so much. But, you know, I just tried to talk about it with... <laughs> I just tried to talk about it. And, you know, Zane wasn't much of a help. And no offense, but I really just want to be alone right now. I hope you don't take that personally. I just, you know, I'm just visiting with my parents. Um, grave right now just trying to cope with it but thank you I will text you later Simone is really a good friend but yeah it's probably not good for her to be in Forgotten Hollow <laughs> honestly um yeah she probably shouldn't be here and I think because they do you know kind of have a, a, a tracker on her they kind of know where where she's at so I think um you know Alistair's kind of going to be on the low down here he's gonna come and just kind of creep up on her not in a creepy way but just just check on her just to make sure okay she's here visiting her parents she's good you know i told you you really need to ask one of us when you when you come to this part of town like you can't just you can't just show up here you know <laughs> um but he's trying, you know, obviously he's, he's aggravated with her because she's been very, like, rude towards him. Um, but as you can imagine, I mean, he's, he's trying to be very understanding. Um, oh, <laughs> he's just gonna lay down and cloud gaze. <laughs> That's not weird at all. No, I want you to come over here. Um, and, oh, well, I was gonna try to cheer her up. We're gonna brighten her day a little bit, and, oh, wow, she is a hot mess. And he... <laughs> not very good at consoling people um but he's just like look this sucks it really does and he's gonna try to cheer her up and he's like look i hate that this had to happen to you but i couldn't let anything happen to you it's not fair so one day you're gonna you're gonna thank us and she's just like whatever dude whatever <laughs> but yeah she's like so this is this the vampire place? Is this, is that why you don't want me around here? And he's like, it's just best that you don't go snooping around in business that you shouldn't be snooping around in. It's just, it's not good for you. But this is where the Zahn family lives. This is where his ex-girlfriend and best friend, um, Lyra and Lucas live. And this is just an empty house right now. Maybe we'll move somebody in later. And this right here is where the Strahd family lives, so we're trying to keep her away from them. But as far as, like, all the other vampires, they are very much aware that um, Belmonts are harboring a, a human. And um, they're all mostly good, so they all mostly kind of, like, agree with him. But at the same time, their guard is up because they don't want to be exposed. But they've got a close eye on her, and I think that she's going to be okay. I'm hoping that she will, but anyways. <sighs> Alistair is like, let's just get out of here. Let's go back home. He's actually really thirsty, <laughs> and he doesn't really want to whip out a, a blood bag and start sucking it down in front of her. I mean, he's trying not to creep her out, but. Right, so, sh we're back home, and she's in her room, and she, you know, she kind of did a little bit of reflecting, a little bit of talking, um, you know, while 
she was on her way back here and they were nice enough to like i said give her her own room and everything so she does have a few screenshots from of her parents and her before they passed away and i think she's ready to just kind of let it go and accept that they're gone so we're going to put their pictures well actually real quick we have to put on the move objects cheat all right, and then we have to go and size them down. If you guys don't have these customizable little um, picture frames here, 1010 recommend. I love them so much. But anyways, yeah, I think that looks really good. And so let's zoom in real quick so we can see. There she is with her mom and her dad. So she does have... Her picture is unpacked, and she will start school, um, will resume school. She's not attending a new school or anything, but I think eventually she is going to kind of just embrace this new life that she has and just be thankful that she's alive. Um, so slowly but surely, I believe that she will start unpacking. But anyways, right now I'm going to have her just come over here and browse the web, just kind of get her fun up a little bit. Um, they really, really need to, to, to have a, a few drinks here, <laughs> um, so they don't get super thirsty and go on, like, a binge, because that would not be good. <laughs> so, yeah, the only bad thing about these blood packs is that, obviously, um, they, they don't fill them up too, too great, but it's okay, we just can't let them get super thirsty. Um, as far as their powers go, in case you haven't noticed... They are resistant to the sun, so they can go out into the sun. They're not thin-skinned, so that's really good. And they have a tamed thirst. I did use a cheat where I don't have to choose weaknesses because I didn't want... You know, some of the weaknesses are just ridiculous, and I wanted them to blend in with the human world. And with them having all those weaknesses, like hissing and stuff like that, just wasn't realistic. But I believe that she has the same... Yes, she has tamed thirst and perfect sun resistance and also she is on level one of um dampened emotion so that's where i kind of explained earlier i don't know if i did a good job explaining it but that's how she's a little bit different from her brother in the sense that she's has dampened emotion so she doesn't really worry about the human life and like Kate crave being a human again she's kind of content with being a vampire she sees it as a blessing now she has this power like I said she's a little bit self-absorbed um yeah so I definitely don't think that she is on the same page with her brother as far as him if he had the opportunity to turn human again he would in a heartbeat I don't think the same is true for Abby I think Abby would stay a vampire and marry into a vampire family and just kind of continue on that legacy as a vampire whereas you know Alistair like I said would probably more than likely take the human route and just kind of go back to his humanity so yeah, I'm just excited. I think this is a lot of fun. I think I'm going to wrap it up here because it has been a lot of talking, a lot going on here, a lot to take in. So hopefully you guys are still with me. Hopefully you guys, um, you guys are excited about um, this family and this Let's Play. I know that I am, and I hope it's different and stands out for you. But anyways, I want to know what you guys think think about it is it is it good is this fun is this is this entertaining um let me know what you think about alistair what you think about abby what you think about brent what route should i take i want to know your opinions i really want you guys to help me make this um a successful let's play so give me your feedback and yeah i will see you in the next part thumbs up if you like it subscribe if you have it and with that being said i'll talk to you guys later bye